Hello again, this is tutorial number 9, part 2, on pattern recognition in biology. And we are using regular expressions in this tutorial. In this part, I'm going to focus on quantifier regular expressions. The first thing to do is to parse a DNA sequence. And once the DNA sequence has been parsed, we clean it, like what we've always been doing it and then we'll go through the agenda of the session. So in this tutorial I'm going to talk about the followings. The first thing is to use optional characters, how to set a search for optional characters or character groups. We use question mark. Then if you set the search for obligatory character you use a plus sign so the second thing is obliged character then we have tandem finders if you have a tandem to search for you use asterisk sign and if you'd like to set a range for an acceptable range of tandem you use these kind of curly brackets if you'd like to search for the beginning or the end of a sequence for the beginning you use caret for the end you use dollar sign so combining all of these techniques will provide you a really good asset so that you can use it for returning specific sequences within any file containing faster dna sequence or any protein containing sequence so let's go ahead and search for these kind of tandems and see what we can do just a recap, the first thing to do is to import regular expressions by writing down import re and then you write down re dot the name of the method that you use and there are several methods provided by regular expressions because regular expressions are actually built-in functionalities within a program that has been added to any other programming language like Python, C and others the function to be written here let's say search so this is the method you can use find find all or split split all these are different methods then once you write down the method you provide the arguments of that method so in the first argument you provide these kind of functionalities that we've been through so let's say you search for this tandem or this DNA sequence setting the last one as optional character and it could be from 1 to 3 but where do you search for this? you search for this one in your DNA sequence and my DNA sequence here is my seek which is the name of the variable containing DNA sequence and you run it so this is how you do it now let's go through them one by one. We import the regular expression and then we try the search pattern for a specific character group and we set them optional. We write down re.search and then we search for this tandem GA in between parentheses you write down AAA followed by a question mark TTT. So this sets these triple A as optional. Then we write down my seek because it contains my DNA sequence. Then the result is we have GA triple T. What this means is return this one. If it contains triple A, return it for me. If it doesn't contain it, it's fine. Just return GA triple T. So this is the match and that's it let's try the obligatory characters this time we say return three G's followed by three T's so this is the print, print statement this one says the last G should exist so there is a difference between those two the first one the question mark was optional while the plus sign is obligatory 
searching for tandems. If you say, I need this tandem to be returned for me, you use the asterisk sign. So it means return this character group or this character for me zero or more times. So in this example that I wrote here, we write down read.search TTT followed by triple C, an asterisk sign. This means return this C here, this C, one or more times. It could be zero or more times. So if it exists like triple C, return it for me. More than that, it's fine, return it for me. So let's see the results of this one. So see, here we have one, two, three, four, five. So there are more than triple C's there, so it returns it for you. We can use this technique to find different tandems. To set the number of tandems, you use curly brackets. The curly brackets could be used as a range or as a specific number. So in, it, in this example here, I have n character, so this is ATGC, which means any character, any nucleotide actually. This number says any nucleotide 18 to 30. So 18 to 30 ends to be returned then followed by 5G. So the beginning here is the accepted range. Maybe you plan to design a primer and it returns it for you. This is the accepted range. Then this one is the set G's. It sets 18 to 30 nucleotides as a range, but the mandatory point here is that you have to have five G's after this. It's specific search. This is another way of doing the same thing using find all method. So previously we had search here, while here we have find all. This one finds it for you. Let's print D. This way, it finds all the occurrence of your search within your DNA sequence. See, these are all the possibilities of occurrence of what you want. So let's say you have an idea to find 10 or more primer sets within a DNA sequence, and you have to have a condition to it. So you write a function, then you use find all method to find 10 primers for the forward primer and 10 for the reverse primer. You have to use find all method because the search method returns one instance while find all returns all the instance or all the occurrences of the possibilities that you provide. This is very useful. If you'd like to return the length of each one of these that have been returned in a list, you can do so using a for loop. So write print, then a list comprehension, you write len i for i in d. So let's see, these are the length of all of the possible outcomes. So if you'd like to see the pattern or how they are distributed within your DNA sequence for some reasons, you can do statistics using it. So how to combine these regular expressions? I wrote an example here. This is an example. You can use it to find mRNA sequences. As you know, mRNA sequences are normally preceded with ATG and it ends with a poly A tail. This is for mRNA sequence, not DNA sequence. 
So knowing this information, you can use this carrot sign and this dollar sign to mark the beginning and the end. You can use find all to find all of the possible occurrences of mRNA sequences within a list of sequences that have been provided to you to search for. So try this one if you have mRNA sequences on your own. Now, I'm going to try to find different open reading frames. However, I'm trying to use different techniques here for you to see the differences of using optional character signs and not using optional character signs. So let's use this one. This is omitting the optional characters. So what we do here is to find all of the occurrences of those sequences that start with ATG and end with a stop codon. Well, I made this optional character here. Whether your sequence ends with TGA or it ends with TAA. So what did I do here? I have ATG in the beginning, followed by 100 to 1000 nucleotides. And to set N, I use this one as I used in the previous tutorials. And this is an acceptable range from 100 to 1000. And do that in your sequence. So let's try to find this out and print X. This gives me a list of all of the occurrences of those DNA sequences that start with ATG and end with TGA. However, their length is limited to 100 up to 1000 nucleotides. This is the limit I set smaller than 100 nucleotides is not accepted larger than 1000 is also not accepted however i can set this range as optional to return me those between this range and omit it as well so let's see what this one returns the first one here that has the optional character here returns sequences that are also smaller than 100 nucleotides but have ATG in the beginning and TAA or TGA at the end. So depending on the requirement of your research or project, you can use any one of those techniques. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for joining me.